Welcome everyone to the Idris workshop. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to learn a little bit about Idris. Um, if, uh, if at some point Idris isn't working for you for some reason, uh, I've got this service called Try Idris, which you can go on. There's a, if you go to slash compile, there's like just a big editor that you can just paste code into. So just take one of the files and paste it in there. Um, you won't be able to do the last exercise because it's too big. I th oh no, you might be able to do it. You might be able to do it. Um, it's just a web server, so maybe it will time out. I don't know. Um, it just can take a while to compile some things. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm Brian McKenna, and I uh, work at uh, Slam Data. I write PureScript, so I've been doing functional programming for a couple of years now, and uh, I think dependent types are the way forward. Um, we're gonna take, it's going to take a while to get there, but I think we'll be doing dependent types in the future sometime. Um, and so, uh, dependent types are more expressive than what, we, what everyone's probably used to. Um, what you can do is have uh, types depend upon uh, values, and so that just allows you to do more things. And why would we want to do more things? One of them is correctness. Uh, we have a lot of problems at the moment where if we want to specify a program, it's hard for us to actually put that into types. Uh, there's, a lot of types there's a lot of cases where we just uh, we either put it into some sort of error type and just say, it can, be, uh, it can either be a value that we expect or it can have some error inside of it. Um, and so other times we just do uh, awful stuff like just trust me or uh, uh, do casting and things like that. And so we don't, if we, ha if we have more expressive types, we were able to encode more things about our programs and be able to prove that th they're correct. Another one is uh, metaprogramming. Because it's more expressive, we can do things like uh, and you can have values depending upon types. We can have values that create types, and we can do some sort of metaprogramming. Uh, I've got an example at the end. Hopefully, we'll get to it. But we'll be able to like uh, have a string literal that is only a valid string, like is only a valid type if it parses correctly. So we can actually have a string literal in our program, and that only our program will only compile if that that string contains the right characters. Um, plus, they're a bit more simple. Uh, Haskell has a lot of extensions to try and do uh, things like dependent types. Um, if you have a programming language with actual dependent types, uh, it's a lot more simple. Like things such as uh, uh, type constructors, we say that type constructors are just functions from types. In Idris, that, that is literally how they're implemented. They're just functions over types. So there's a lot of things that get unified because we've got dependent types, and that makes it a little bit more simple. Now, writing dependent type programs can be a little bit more complicated because we have to prove a lot more. But uh, the, the fundamental theory behind dependent types is usually more simple. Um, so Idris is the tool we'll be using for this workshop. Um, there's a lot of other ones. There's Coq, Agda, and a couple others. Um, what makes Idris different is that it's good for writing executables. It's built for writing executables. Things like Coq and uh, Agda have this idea of proof extraction. So you write a proof and then you extract it to a program. Idris is built for writing, writing executables, not, not second. Uh, it's written first for writing executables. Um, and along with that is a lot of tooling. Uh, there's a backend for JavaScript, so we can compile Idris programs to JavaScript, to C code, uh, to LLVM. There's also a Java one which compiles to a Maven project and then compiles using Maven. Um, if you know anything about Java's ecosystem, that's, you're probably horrified by that. Um, and there's a lot of tooling around. Uh, there's a really good REPL. Uh, Agda does quite a good, uh, has, uh, has, has a pretty good tooling ecosystem as well, but. Uh, uh, Idris is getting along as well. Idris is, is starting to compete. Um, and there's lots of syntactic sugar. Um, Agda, for example, doesn't have uh, do notation. Uh, Idris does. And it's got a lot of other things. Like It's got these things called idiom brackets, um, which Haskell doesn't have. And it's got a couple more extensions that, that Haskell doesn't have. Uh, so it's for making dependent types a little bit more, more easy to write. So. Uh, we're going to start with uh, talking about equality. Uh, with dependent types, we can easily talk about equality, which is really cool. Um, and you can do something like that in uh, Haskell, but we'll see, we'll see what dependent types gives us. So if everyone can load up the equal Idris file. Um, has everyone, how many people have got like an editor that's got good Idris support? Only a couple of people. 
Yeah, that's good. Um, Emacs has got a special mode if you're using the Emacs mode. Um, for the others, uh, if you If you, load a, if you just load up the uh, Idris program, I'm running this on a Chromebook, so it's not the fastest. Um, but we can load. If we do that, we should see the, this meta variable stuff. Does that is that working for everyone? If you're in Emacs, you press Control C, Control L, and they'll load it up and give you something very similar. I don't know what you do for Vim. I'm sorry. Here we were defining a. Uh, we're defining a type called equal. Given an x and y, we can only get an equal if, it, if a and a. So we're saying that uh, if a and if the x and y are the same thing, then we can instantiate it and say this is a reflexive. So there's only one constructor for this type, and we can only construct it if the left hand side and the right hand side are the same thing. Does it make sense to everyone? Anyone confused by this syntax? Anyone? This is we can write this in Haskell. It's a GADT. Um, there's a little bit, it's a little bit different because we don't have dependent types, and so you'll see, that, see the difference in a minute. But uh, we're just defining a GADT where the only way to create an equal type is if the two things are actually equal. What do you mean? It's a constructor. You're defining a constructor? Defining a constructor that can only, yeah, the type of that constructor is when two things are literally equal. Um, so this will come up when, uh, so Idris has to prove that these two things when Idris can see that these two things are exactly syntactically equal, we can create this, we can construct this. Does that make sense? So uh, here we've, we're going to create an equal. And we're saying that when Boolean and Boolean are equal, we're going to instantiate that. We're going to create an equal. So how would we do that? Anyone want to take a guess? What's that? Of, of booleans, what we're actually saying is that the type boolean, not the t not, we're not saying that the values of booleans are equal, we're saying that the types, that bool the type of boolean is equal to the type of boolean. Yeah. So we just put in, uh, we just put in reflexive here. And what we've done is proven that Boolean equal to Boolean. Like that's all we've done. And we can do this exact thing in Haskell. So Haskell can prove that two types are equal. You just have to enable the GADT uh, extension, and you, can, and you can do exactly that. What gets interesting, though, is that in Idris, we can actually put values in the types. So here we can actually prove that. Here we're actually proving that true is equal to true. Does it make sense to everyone? This is something that you'd have to do a, a, a promotion in Haskell. So you have to promote a Boolean into a type. You have to promote a Boolean value into a type. So we can promote true into a type, which is kind Boolean. But in Idris, we don't have to do that. We just take the value and put it up there. It just allows you to put values into the type. Does it make sense to everyone? Anyone lost already? A little bit. OK. <laughs> So this type, equal, takes an x and a y. Mm -hmm. So it's a type constructor, right? Mm -hmm. it takes an x and a y. Right. Anyone lost so far? No. So to create a value of that type, we use reflexive. But reflexive can only be created if the two types, if x and y, are the same. Because we're using a in the same places. Oh, okay. It just figures out that these two things have to be exactly the same. Okay. Does it make sense to everyone now? What's that? Like a value constructor, so they construct a value. Ref okay. Reflexive is a value. Um, yes, reflexive is a value. Equal is a type. Okay. Well, okay. equal is a type constructor that takes two arguments, two two other yeah, and reflexive things. Is a, just a value. Reflexive is a value. Okay. Exactly. Is it making more sense to everyone? Yes. So Haskell has the same thing. When you enable GADTs, it has to know type equality. So 
it has this built-in thing and it can compare two types as, as equal. And that's the first example, like you can compare Boolean to Boolean and you can do that in Haskell. But it starts getting interesting. You don't have to do promotion here. Idris, we don't say that, you, it take, that, that equal takes two types. We say it takes two things. And then we can compare any two things together. So any two terms, we can lift up and compare them as equal in Idris. Does it make sense? Reflexive is, uh, what, what do you mean by that? It's the name of the type constructor? It's the name of, it's, so reflexive is a type constructor and its, and its type is when two things are equal. It, capt it captures a proof that two things are equal. Yeah, so my next example. <laughs> um, so how, how would we do this one then, Daniel? No, I don't know. But um, I would just ask the question. OK, so this one is actually exactly the same. So what it just does is uh, it computes the, it actually uh, it tries to reduce as much as possible on, in the types. So it'll actually reduce 1 plus 1 to 2 and then see that 2 and 2 are equal. So we've just proven that 1 plus 1 is 2. So where, where does it stop that evaluation, though? Is it just beta evaluating the terms as far as possible? As far as possible. What if your terms are, what if your terms are, are partial? Um, uh, non yeah, uh, it won't. It won't reduce it at all. So uh, it just has to know that things are total, so meaning that they will reduce to a value before it will, allow, before it will even reduce at all in the type. If it, if it knows that it's partial, um, like it just has a totality checker. And so if, it, if you haven't proven that it's total, then it won't reduce anything in the type. It'll just leave that as a whole. I don't know anything about this. I'm not proving Like, you can't prove it. So how far does that take it? Like, like plus is a method, right? So yep. how does it, I mean, will it just evaluate? Yep. Uh, so it, just, uh, it has to be total, like I said, so it has to reduce to a value. It has to, it has to um, be productive. Um, and of course, like, you, I don't think you can do unsafe perform I.O. because that's, that's partial. Um, so you can't, do any, like, you can't do any effects or anything like that. It'll just reduce any, any computation over pure values. So we're saying that so we're saying two so two is the proof like the, the, the equals on the right hand side of the equals is the proof. Oh okay. And the and the top is the proposition. So we're saying we're proposing that that two equals okay. Okay. one plus one and here's the proof. Okay. I keep trying to read it like Haskell. Right. Originally. Well, yes, it is it's yeah. Uh, we go a little bit further than Haskell, but yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, sort of tagging on to an earlier question, if you do have something partial in a type, is there a way of sort of saying, you know, reduce one step, or will it just refuse? I, I think it will just refuse. Okay, there's no, there's no way. I don't know of any other way, yeah. I, I know that it's just refused for me before. Okay. And that's because I've made a mistake and not made things total. It's a proposition. It's the proposition and the proof, yeah. It's the proposition and the proof? Yeah. So you're asking Idris to prove the first one. Well, this is true, but they have that relationship. We're, we're proposing something and we're giving the proof. The proof is reflexive. We're just saying it, one equal, uh, two equals two because it's reflexively equal. Like, they're both the same on the right. Uh, the, they're the same on both sides. Does that make some sense? Maybe a silly question, but so if you do like equal two and one plus two, and then we do two equals reflexive, it will fail? Yeah. <laughs> OK. Let's, let's do that. Why not? Yep. So. OK, that's 
So it cannot prove that, we can't unify two is three. Yeah. So this is, this is actually a proof. Like if, we've, if it compiles, we know that we actually implemented, we actually can prove that two equals two. Um, so anyone that's following along with the REPL, you can just uh, type in the changes and then reload it. So you can see that before we had four others, but we've done three of those, like, I should explain how holes work. So see where we've got a question mark? That is what uh, Idris calls a meta variable. Um, I like to call it a hole, because it's like a hole in the program. Idris will load it. It just won't have any computation content to it, so it'll say you have to eventually give me some sort of proof here, or you have to fill in this hole. Um, so we've, we've removed three of those holes so far, or meta variables. And so if we load that up into the, into the REPL, we'll see that before we had four other uh, meta variables to solve, and now we've only got one other. So we're going through it. So if, if you're implementing this and like, you load up into the REPL, if you get an error, then, you've, then we've, we've done something wrong. If uh, you see the meta variable count go down, then you've done something good. So uh, there's a couple of things we can do with this. So if we know that A equals B and B equals C, we should know that A equals C, right? Does it make sense to everyone? We should be able to know that. So how would we implement this one? Anyone take a guess? So uh, the answer is that like, uh, so what, happen, what will happen if we uh, put reflexive in here? So it, can't, it doesn't know that C and A are the same thing. Why doesn't it know that? Exactly, yeah. So I'll undo that. So what we need to do is actually pattern match on the uh, we need to pattern match on the A and the uh, the A B and the A uh, B C. It was that will make that will uh, that's the only possible way to have something that's equal, right? Like that's the only way to construct something that's equal. Do we agree on that? So reflexive is the only way, and reflexive's type is when A and A. So when we pattern match on it, it'll unify uh, the A and B and the B and C. So it'll know that those are all the same thing. Does it make sense? Like this is this is pattern matching that'll like refine what we know about the type variables that we put into the proposition. Is that making sense? Like if we if we pattern match on that equality and that equality, it'll know that that A and B must be the same thing. That must be the A and A, right? So if we do that, then we can say that A B and oh. Yeah, A, B, and then C are all the same thing, so we can just instantiate it with reflexive, and, and we know. Does it make sense? Anyone lost? Someone's lost. Come on. Uh, oh, okay, so um, yes, we'll get there. Bear with me for this, and we'll get there. Uh, we'll prove something a little bit more interesting. We'll prove something cool in a minute. Um, so if A and B are the same, if we know A and B are the same, then we should know that B and A are the same, right? Yes. You said that's a pattern match? That's a pattern match, yes. But it's not total if the types don't match, right? The ones The only way to construct an equality, though, is if it is if they do match. Does that make sense? Like, there's no way to construct an equality where they don't match, because that would not be equal. There's no other constructor, so we can only pattern match on one case, therefore it's total. Does it make sense? It's great that all of our proofs are used down to the same word. Just type that word a few more times. Yes. Um, so if you went back and sort of added just sort of some other constructor that was 
So basically everything would fall apart, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I put in like. Yeah, then like we can prove anything is equal to anything. Right. And so would the, fo the, would the following things then fail to compile? Uh, yeah, because they'll be non-total. Um, uh, if th there's one thing I always forget to put, but by default, Idris is partial. It allows you to write any functions that are partial. Um, I hate that, but um, if you change the default to total, then these should fail to compile. But we could also say like. We could do that. Right. You know, just booleans and strings, same thing. It's JavaScript now. So transitive is like a function over sites, uh, over proofs, rather? Uh, it takes a proof yeah. that A is equal to B, yep. a proof that B is equal to C, it produces a proof. Exactly. That's exactly it. I can't remember how to do this one. You want to? Anyone want to take a guess? Oh, this should be easy, right? So Idris basically did all the work there. You just like, if you have the, uh, like this is why I really recommend having an editor installed. I just pressed a couple of hotkeys and it just figured out the proof for me. Um, <laughs> I press control C, control S on the congruent, which split it out and gave me the like gave me a function body. <coughs> I'll do it in steps. So here, I've just written so let's just say I've written this type out. I don't know anything like I don't know how to prove this. I just I want this. I want Idris to help me create this. So I press control C, control S. And this will just create a function body. I put a hole in because it doesn't know how to prove it yet. So it just put in like you know it, it just put in the arguments for me. I press Control C, Control C. It figured out that the only thing is uh, reflexive. If there's more than one constructor, it'll break it down. But there's only one constructor, so it figures out it's reflexive. And then we can do a proof search. So we can say it just try and create a value of this type, which is pretty cool. So I just press Control C, Control A. It says reflexive. So now we've got a proof. So just in a couple of hotkeys, we, we can prove something. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, there's Emacs and Vim. Someone's working on Atom at the moment. Um, suppose there's a sub sublime one, but it's not very good. Um, and you can actually do this in the REPL as well, but it's pretty tricky. OK. Anyone follow along so far like that? If we have a function from t to t, and then we uh, have, and we know that a and b are the same, then we should be able to run. We should be able to run that function with a, or run that function with b, and get the same thing. It doesn't matter; like they're, they're equal, so we should always get the same thing, right? We should get the same value. Yeah, because it's a pure function, and we know that a is equal to b. If we run the function with either value, because it's the same one. No, no, equal says that, equal, you can say that anything's the same. So up here, we we're showing that, uh, we're saying that these values are the same. We're saying that true is true, or that two is two. So we can actually, like, yeah, so we're running a function. But yeah, we could also put a type up there, and we can say that given, if we instantiate t to type, we can say that, we can say for type constructors, and we can prove type, type constructors, like, having the same type and then having the same Having a type constructor of that type is the same thing. So Idris doesn't make a distinction value. here. What's that? In this case, t means a value? T means, yeah, anything. It could be a, it, it could be a type. Oh, either way. Right. Yeah, either way. Yeah, it's polymorphic over, over both of those. Anyone want to take a guess how we can prove the next one? It's getting a little bit trickier now. What's that? Hot keys. Hot keys? <laughs> 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 All right. Anyone want to take a guess before I do that? <laughs> so, what, what, okay. So, uh, people might not know this syntax. Uh, so, uh, z here or z is uh, is zero, and what we're proving is that 
So nat is a natural number, so numbers from zero upwards. There's no negatives or anything like that, and it's only it's uh, it's an inductive definition. So we have either zero or we've got a successor of zero, and so we can just keep adding one. So z is a predefined constant somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Z is built in. Um, it's a built-in zero value uh, for nats. Okay. So we're saying that having getting a nat and then adding zero to it should get the same natural number, right? You can still make the natural number definition yourself. Oh yeah. Is that right? Yeah, so we can write our own. This is our own natural number, and we could do the same thing. We just replace z with z. And what we're trying to prove is that adding, adding z onto something doesn't actually change that number. So yes, we've got to get to a reflexive eventually. How can we get there? Yeah. So let's, yep. So there's a two cases. So we've got, uh, so Idris will see that z, we've got z here, so n is z. So if we go z plus z, what do we get? z. So if we, if we, we can fill in that with reflexive because we know, we know that z is z. Like this one can reduce now because we know what n is. So we can reduce that, that, value, that type. So we know z is z. And we can prove it that it's reflexive because z equals z. Like when we add them together, we get z back out. It's all the same. So it's evaluating, it's actually evaluating that plus as part of its type proof. Right. So that, that uh, I think I can write this out so I can say that the, yeah. So the is just a way to like ascribe a type. So it, 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 which is cool like because in Idris, like we don't have to have special syntax for that. In Haskell, we have to special, have special syntax. We can just write a function that takes a type and then a value and then prove that the, the value has that type. So what we're doing is proving that reflexive here has z and z on both sides. So that's, that's when we've instantiated it. Yeah. Um, yes. There's also a doc is very good. Uh, it shows you, yeah, the uh, thing. <laughs> yes, it's a uh, control C, control D, D, something like that. <laughs> What's that? Um, okay, how do we, how can we do the uh, successor case? How do we can, how how can we prove that successor of K? plus zero equals successor of k. Someone said recurse before. What's that note? Anyone done any proof theory or anything? Any, anyone done any proofs before? Before the, today? What's, what's recursion known in proof theory? Induction. induction. So we're going to use some induction, right? So we're going to make a recursive call. So something's going to have to be a recursive call. What are, how are we going to do that? What's the call going to look like? So we're going to recurse and prove that um, that k is the same as uh, k plus 0 is k. Does it make sense? And oh yeah, that's just a that's a pattern matching. We're saying that uh, given a successor of a number, so k is another number. So we're like k is one less than n. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 
Because we write it out so much. Is this, does it make sense now? Yeah, Awesome. Um, yeah, so if we know that, uh, that k plus 0 is k. How can we transform that proof to show that successor of, of k plus 0 equals the successor of k? The definition's at the top. There's a, there's a hint right at the top. So we can. So we've got a proof that uh, that k plus zero equals k. So we can do a congru congruent. Say the successor of of that. Congruent successor. Exactly. Hopefully that works. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So we're just saying that like prove the previous number and then we're just adding one to that that number. Does it make sense? Anyone lost? <laughs> What's the what? Oh, that is. Here, yeah, we'll look at the. Man, this on a type to an expression. It's like uh, if you've used. Have you used Haskell before? Yeah. So it's like saying. Uh, it's like saying one has a number of int. Okay. In Idris, we'd say that the int one. I, I, you don't need it, yeah. Oh, so you could just write it. Like yep, exactly. I, I just I just put it in there to show that we're we're that the type of this reflexive is actually zero and zero. It's not the type that we see above. Like we've instantiated the the end to be zero, so we can be more specific in this case, and it will show. Does it make sense, to everyone? And does the so the inductive case makes sense congruent over the inductive case? No, it doesn't make sense, does it? A congruent will say that um, <laughs> congruent will give you so you have to have a function over um, a t and given um, given I'll make it a little bit more clearer so uh, a and b are actually uh, t's. So we're saying that uh, we're saying that given given that a and b are equal, and we've got a function from t to x. Then we can run a and b through that function, and they'll be the same thing because they're equal. They're equal to begin with. So it's like saying like zero and zero equal. Running a function over that doesn't matter. Like they're the, they're, they're always going to be equal. The x is like the output, so we say like the output. So we're saying that the output of, of that function is the same. So given, <laughs> given a and b, which are t's, give it to that function, we get an x, those x's are the same. Make sense? Does a and b have to be equal? A and b, yes, exactly, they have to have, yes, they're equal. So what we're saying is that, uh, so here we're saying f is s. So f is the successor function. So we're saying that we've got a proof from the previous number all the way down to 0. We've got a proof all the way down to 0, and we're just adding 1 each time. We're saying that, yes, we've proven that 0 and 0 are equal. We can just add 1 to both sides, and we've got yeah, proof that they're equal. Main kind of question, I mean, where do we add 1? Congruent does that. Congruent adds 1 and then gives it into the type. We are subtracting one by doing the plus zero. So we've got the k, and then we do the inductive case. We say, like, prove it for the previous number. Then we say, add one to that proof. So the base, base case is zero. And we just keep recursing down to zero. We just keep adding one back on. So I think one way to say it is that we are actually subtracting one until we get to zero. Exactly. And then once we get to zero, we'll add one each time yes. back up to the number. Yes, that's exactly it. Anyone confused by that? That's a complete induction, right? As opposed to the type where you just need two cases. I don't, right? I don't know what you mean by that. 
I, I have no idea what you mean by that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to show a different way to do this. Uh, you'll notice that we'll have an equal sign now instead of the equal word, the equal type constructor, equal. This one is actually built into Idris, and Idris lets us do some cool things with it. Some people hate it, some people like it, but I'll show you how to use it anyway. So we'll do the same thing, we'll split. And here, this one will be called REFL instead of reflexive. They just use a short term REFL. It's the same thing, same idea, that you can only prove that two things are equal. But, uh, but just uh, it's got syntactic shortcut for the equal. Now what we see, if we load this up, we'll see this meta variable. If we expand that, Idris is, because we've got the equal sign, Idris is able to do a little bit more and able to say that we need to prove that these two things are equal. That k, successor of, of k equals successor of k. So we've got like a thing that's telling us what we need to prove before we had to just keep it around in our head. Does it make sense? That Idris has given us a little bit more information than what we had before? How do you get Idris to do that? Yep, you should load it up and you uh, metavars. Oh. There we go. You just ask for the type, so colon t, and it'll give you that type. And so that you must prove that this is the same. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the the built-in equal sign has more magic. Yeah. Then okay. Yep. Then define your own. Yep. And we'll show you that right now. Um, So we'll do the same thing, induction equals plus zero, but we've got a prime now, k, in. Keep a hole in there, though. If we expand this, what we have is Idris telling us exactly what proof we have by doing the inductive case and what we need to prove. Does it make, like, see how this is a little bit more clearer than what we had before? We've got more information, we've got that, we've got what's in scope, and we also have what we need to prove. That one, I think, came in using my mode, the underscore two. You can name it anything. Everyone, everyone understand this so far? No? Why do we have a JP zero instead of Yeah, Idris has got sugar. That's just sugar. It's just sugar. Okay. Um, it, it is a Z, it's just Idris will render it as zero sometimes. What's that? If you use zero instead of z, it will just blow up. I mean, it will not compile. Uh, I don't know. You should be able to use it. You should be able to use zero. Okay. There's like a from int. Yeah, it does a it does a weird thing. Like you should be able to use zero up there. I think. Is is zero considered an int and not a max? No, uh, it's polymorphic. So like it's it's a uh, it's overloaded. Um, so zero can be a. Uh, it does that from integer thing. That's why I avoid it, because it's a bit hard to explain. OK. Everyone, up to, everyone understand this so far? We know what's in scope. We know what we need to prove. Idris has shown us that. And it doesn't help like that if you use reflexive, only if you use REFL. I mean the, 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 oh, yeah, reflexive is something that I created. REFL oh, is right, the built-in right, thing, right. so we need to say that yeah, REFL is the one that can that can be uh, that is the constructor for that type of equality. Mm -hmm. So the built-in one's a little bit more magic, and I'll show you how in this mode. So if you are using a I'll make this a bit smaller. 
So if you uh, type in P, you'll go into the special mode. And you should be able to just type in everything I type in from now on. Um, so we're going to intros. So intros will give us what's in scope and tell us what we need to prove again, like we had before. Intros will just bring everything into scope for us. What we can say is rewrite. So we've got this hole. We want to rewrite this hole with our proof. Anyone see that? See what's happening there? So uh, previously we had this inductive case. And we, we know that plus k and 0 equals k. So what we're going to do is replace the plus k and 0. Sorry, we're going to replace the k on our right-hand side of the equality with what we have on the left-hand side of the induction. Does that make sense? Everyone see, everyone see, see that happening? So the k gets replaced with what's on the left-hand side of our inductive, our induction variable. No, you can, uh, well, yes, but you can uh, write sim. And sim is symmetric, so we'll like flip it, o we'll flip it over. And uh, yeah, so now we, can, now we know that k, s of k equals k. Does it make sense to everyone that we've got the inductive case? We rewrite what, our, what we're trying to prove with our inductive case, and then we've got something that's equal. Is that special view only available No, you can, uh, so, if you, so if you go colon p, and then the hole that you put in, the question mark thing, you can go intros, uh, rewrite, induction. Oh, why did that not work? Is colon p short for something? Proof. Yes, I didn't load. Uh, so intros, rewrite, Rewrite induction and see how it's the same on both sides now. So we're done with our proof. What we can go is uh, we can write trivial. It says that when no, there's no more goals, we've proved what we needed to prove. Yeah? In Emacs, how do you um, do that thing where it effects? Oh, uh, meta n. Meta n, yeah. And meta p to go backwards. So we can write trivial. Says that no more goals. We've done with the proof. We've proven what we wanted to prove. Now we can write QED. <laughs> Keep this proof script. If we say yes to that, Idris, uh, Emacs will add it in. So we've, here's the proof for that thing, and we've done. We've finished this file. Yeah, the, only, the hardest thing is knowing when you have to do induction. That's, that's literally the hardest part. Yeah, so if you do QED, you'll get that thing that you can copy and paste back into your file if you're using the REPL. Everyone satisfied with that? Proving that n plus 0 equals n? What's that? Oh, yeah. If you type in QED, did you type in that? Yeah. You should see this. Yeah. You can copy and paste this. Like three lines. Those four lines. Uh -huh. Put that on the end of your file and you're done. Everyone followed along so far? Yeah, so this, this, is, this, this is known as the uh, tactic uh, form of Idris. So you can use tactics to prove things. Um, so the tactics that we used were, uh, let's, let's go through it again. Yes, we're not using Idris itself. We're using like a language that it uses for proof sometimes that you don't have to use. You can still use the things that I was showing before, like incongruent and stuff. Right. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So this is the hole that we need to prove. This is what we're trying to prove. That, that that's the type that we're trying to prove. 
if we, try, if we type in intros, that's the function that we need to prove. If we type in intros, it'll take the arguments from that function and put it in to scope and say that, that his, his, the end goal is the thing on the right-hand side of the function, and these are the things you have in scope. I like it. Other people don't. Um, why don't they like it? Why don't they like it? Uh, it's because it's um, magic. It's kind of magic, yeah. Um, <laughs> plus, it, plus, you're using a second language, you, well, like. And it's not even like some theorem prover. It's like you use tactics, but it's still like kind of generating code that it then has to put back in. Yeah, you could you could write a bogus tactic, but then it just would generate something that still didn't work. It yeah, oh well, yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Like you can't just prove anything here. Like it, it has to be, it has to make sense. But there's a lot of things that like, you can put in here and just say proof search, and it'll just like try and figure it out for you. Yeah. Um, spit out the idris. Uh, spit out the idris from the tactic. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Instead of actually writing functions. Right. But you okay. can't actually get the function body as it would be in the address if you Right. Right. You just do, yeah. Right. Okay. So uh so interest brings everything into scope. If we do a rewrite, what we do is we've got this proof. See how we've got an equal sign already in the scope? Induction is like saying that k and zero equals k. So we've got that. We can rewrite our goal type with that proof. Intros brings things into scope if you, so see here how we've got this function? We're trying to prove this function. If we just type in intros, it just brings that, those variables from that function into scope and changes our goal to be. That's just sort of the previous thing and like how does it know what to bring in scope? It's what's in the type, right? Yeah, what's in the type, so. Yeah. So see here we've got, our goal is the function right now. Our goal has a, is a function, it's got a k, and it's got this thing. Does that make sense? Like that, that is our goal. And if we type in intros, it changes our goal to be the, the right-hand side instead of, instead of being the whole function that we have to prove. We now just have to prove what was on the right-hand side of that function and it brings the two arguments into scope so that we can use them. Does that make sense? Uh, like the type is, I want to try and prove this, and then the equals is, here's a value that proves that this thing exists. Yeah, so if we, yeah, so we have this thing, we're saying that, we're saying we have this inductive case, and we've got this question mark, so we've got a hole. We're saying, like, and so when we load it up, Idris will say, you've got a hole, do you want to prove it? Okay. And then you say, yes, I want to prove it. Introduce the variables that are in scope in this, and where I am in that hole. And then you can rewrite the goal with what you have in scope. And then you can say trivial QED and save them to the file. Kind of like static proof QED. Right. Yeah. Type driven development. So you can see here, same goal. So we can say trivial, QED, save it in, we're done. That's it. And it just checks the tactic stuff at the bottom. Yeah? So, so uh, on the question of you know, interest versus just tactic language, just for my experience and sort of other tactic languages, tactics sometimes are easier to write, but almost always hard to read. Exactly. I mean, it's formally proven, though, so why would you read it? <laughs> so you really, really need some way for it just to turn the tactic stuff into it's back into a function it. body that somebody else can read. Anyway. Maybe. Is there a, like, I don't know of anything like that. That would be cool, though. It would be, yes. Very nice for the readers. <laughs>
Well, the thing is, like, uh, there's like things like proof search, and so how do you put that into there? Like, you can't like so if you have a tactic, it'll do proof search, and then if you upgrade Idris, maybe it'll work, and maybe it won't. Like, it's actually kind of dynamic in that way. Um, Chuck it like yeah. Do proof search and then once it, once you got something right, chuck it in and forget that I did a proof search. Yeah, like, I would like that. That's that's what Emacs does. But that's that, I mean, that's the equivalent of um, you know doing code generation in your build. Like, yeah. As soon as your code generation succeeds, you're just gonna like delete the code generation. generation. <laughs> like, yeah. I I I think I think they're just it's just a different tool, right? And, and you yep. use it for some different use cases. If it's not free, though, then I have some problems. Okay, um, let's load up the uh, algebraic file. Algebraic. Just load that one. Okay, um, we've already spent an hour, so I'm going to try and do this one in half an hour, and then we'll try and get to something really cool in the last half an hour. Um, so we've got these two functions. Ignore why I did. I wrote th things like that. I just did. Um, <laughs> I do. So uh, idempotent is a. Uh, let. We'll go down here. So idempotent takes a function a to a, and then an a, and then proves that. Uh, it creates a type that that proves that f of f of a equals f of a. So applying the function once is the same as applying it twice. Definition of idempotent. Does it make sense to everyone? So. Also, it returns it. Oh, because it's like equal there, right? So it returns a idempotent type. Yes, it returns a, it returns a type, and the type is the equality. Wow. And. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. No, it's saying for the A. For just the specific A. Yes, okay. you can see that F of A. Yes, yeah, so we're not putting in there for all A. We're just saying for this A. So you can write, so you can see here that uh, not and not equals not true. Is that right? So uh, So we're asking, so with the first one, not not true. Oh, hang on, we're not, I've skipped the idempotent part. Here we go. Oh, okay, ignore that. So ignore, ignore the idempotent for now. We'll, we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, so we've got a function that says not and not of true equals true. So doing not twice is the same thing, right? Does that make sense to everyone? So doing, it, doing the function twice is the same as doing it, not, not doing it at all. So if we, we can prove that one using REFL, yep. Because we, are, we were asked to prove that true equals true. Now we've got false equals false. That one's an easy one to fill in, right? Ruffle again. But how about, so we, we've got the true case, we've got the false case. We should be able to say for all, right? We should be able to say for all Booleans, not and not of that Boolean equals the Boolean. So doing, doing the function twice is the same as do, not doing it at all for, all, bo for both Booleans. Is that just a pattern match in two raffles? Exactly. So if we just split this Boolean into, two pattern uh, into the pattern match, so both cases, we see that uh, if we were to load this up without the, without the pattern match, we were asked to prove that B is a bool and like that that not not of that of that boolean is the same as the boolean. We don't know anything about the boolean, so what we need to do is pattern match on it. We need more information than just that we have a boolean. 
So if we, oh, if we load that up after we, after we change it to pattern match with two holes, we have to prove that false equals false and true equals true, which we can do. That's pretty easy, right? Well, reflexive is the one that we created for our own data type called equal. This one is the built-in type. We're using the equal sign, which is the built-in thing, and REFL is the way to create the built-in one. For the case not not false, for instance, that is also not not false one word? Could we have, instead of using REFL, used not not false? Oh, yeah. Sure. Or you could just say not not false. The thing is, like, we're just proving that False equals false. So any way that we can prove that we're good. Um, so yeah, we could I mean we could do that not not false. But you can see that the type signature of not not false has is on. If we reduce the type signature that we put up there, then we get false equals false. But if we just leave it, like if we if we didn't reduce it, like reflect refl is probably the better way to do that because it's it's it makes more sense like that false equals false. Like it's more specific than then saying something like that. Even though it does reduce down to the same thing, it's Okay, so is the point of not a false one where it's just for demonstration then? Just for demonstration, yep. But would it work if you literally detected instead of reference not a false, or do you have to give it the type signature? Oh no, you don't have to give it the type signature. No, not for the false case. So, so, so the fact that uh, that this function equals so that applying this function twice is the same as uh, not applying at all is known as an involution. That's that's an algebraic property that, that that some functions have. So, XOR if you do an XOR with anything, and you do that twice is the same as not doing it at all. So for both booleans, so for true and false, doing XOR with true and false, and then true and false. So is that just false? Exactly. Does it make sense to everyone that, that XOR is an involution, and we can prove that? <coughs> like, you don't have to trust me, we can prove that. <laughs> so we just do the same thing, we just split, and so now we have to prove that. Yeah, that's not good. Um, yeah, we do have to split it twice. I just thought that type signature would be more useful than what it is. Um, basically saying that B and true and true equals B, right? The delay is for laziness. Uh, the and is lazy, so delay gets put in in the in the value to like make it a lazy. Lazy true. Lazy, yeah, yep. So it has to put this uh, delay constructor in to delay things to make it lazy. OK, um, so how can we prove that b and, and true and, and true equals b? Pattern match. This is, like, this is the answer for everything. We just pattern match on everything, and then we just Put in raffle, we're good. <laughs> Does it make sense that that we've just proven that that XOR, if you XOR with false and then you give it the argument true, it's the same thing as just as as true. Like doing that twice is the same thing as true. And the same thing for false, and we can just do it for all cases. XOR is defined actually up the top. So we're trying to prove something about XOR? Yep. That we did it right or something? Yep. Okay. That, uh, that doing XOR twice is the same as not doing it at all. With this, doing XOR twice with the same argument is the same as not doing it at all. Is there, I mean, you just basically made a reflexive truth table there. Is there yep. an ability to do that more easily? That was easy. <laughs> 
I mean, and, and it's, it's semantically divorced from the factual concept. I mean, I can look at that and I can say, oh, it's a, it's a truth table in every case is reflexive. But that's like two semantic steps, and I had to get there by parsing your thing and like looking at the table cases. And then I had to convince myself that it was exhausted, and like, there's all of this indirection. You did, come on. I can just say, like, XOR involution by reflexive truth table, done, or by reflexive truth table. Mm. That would be awesome. You should, you, <laughs> <laughs> you should work on that. Something, yeah, yeah. With a yeah. This is this is values. this is not like the most common case. Usually, you've got induction or something more like, more interesting. Almost all the time, you're going to be trying to prove something about a type that has an infinite number of values, and there yeah. you, you're well, you're, you're, you're going to be a lot bulkier. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, for some reason, though, this truth table bit. Yeah. Is Confusing. Sense okay. They do. Yep. In the XOR function call. Yeah, if you look at. It so. wasn't saying false and true are the same. It's saying false and true give you the same value when you plug it into XOR. So this is, this is a function that creates a type. And the type will be, like, if we, just apply, if we just manually do this, so we should say that not. Oh, XOR A of. What is it? X of X that. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So that's 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 what what we're really doing before. It's just a little bit of we're just using a function to create that type. So that type really is that. And so what we're saying is that false. If you say if the first case is false, so A is false, and then you you XOR XOR false with XOR false, and then false equals false, right? So we were just saying, like, we're just going for every single, every, uh, everything in the domain, like, we just compute. Just, 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 just do every possible way to, to, to get there. Make sense? OK. What, what, it's, what it's doing is just plugging these values into the type, creating the type, and then we're just saying ref, refl, which is, like, creating a value of that type. So every possible way to get to that type, we'll get to the get to the right hand side. We're, we're creating a uh, value for that. Make sense? Now we're going to prove that something is not true. Anyone want to guess how we would do that? <laughs> no. Uh, no, that's non-constructive, right? Yeah, there's something like absurd, exactly. So what we say is that there's a void type. Void has no inhabitants. Like there's no way to create a void. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if we were able to take something, a proof, and prove void, basically prove anything from uh, from that from that proof, then then we've proven that something is false. So that's actually a proof by contradiction. It's almost a proof by contradiction. Yeah, well, there's, there's a, yeah, because you have a base assumption. That's your assumption. Mm -hmm. It's a constru it's a constructive proof by contradiction. Let me just prove it. It's Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> anyone want to take a guess how to do this? No. <laughs> pattern match. <laughs> pattern match. Just say every time I ask a question, just say pattern match. Or raffle. Or raffle. Or raffle. So now what we have to prove is that not not false equals not false. So we have to prove that. What will this result in? True, false, right? True. So we have to prove that false equals true. Don't do that. So how can we create a proof? Um, how can we create a proof of equality? Raffle, right? There is no way to do it. So how would we prove that there is no, there's, there's, there's uh, no inhabitants of, uh, 
of of equal of that type. Like what? true and false. Yeah. Oh, um, that's, what, that's what it's reducing to, yes. Okay. So, pa pattern, pattern? Pattern match? Pattern match, come on. <laughs> so, if we have REFL, right, it just will say, you're trying to prove that false equals true. What are you trying to do? So, we go to something almost like absurd, Right? <laughs> we tell Idris, Idris knows, like, Idris is like, hang on, you're trying to prove that true equals false, right? Idris knows that that's impossible because it's got built in inequality, right? So we can say impossible and then it will prove anything. And that works for any time where you pattern match and there's a case that you know. It's not possible. Is yep, not exactly. If Idris says, if Idris tries to unify things that can't unify, you can put impossible in there. And so you say, this case is impossible. So if you do impossible for all of them, then it knows it's void. Exactly. So we do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so now, okay. so what we've proven is that if we have an equality, if, we've pr if, we, if we somehow get an equality that, uh, uh, that true equals false, then we can prove anything. We can prove void, even, by just saying impossible. Make sense? It's total because we've gotten through all the cases. There's only one one uh, constructor for equality, right? Raffle. Yeah. So we can only say we can say pattern match on raffle. If it's not raffle, then it can't be anything else. Like so, we can pr like there's no there's no cases for this that actually make sense. Like, totally exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that sounds. Oh, uh, let's do it. So, if we don't pattern match, we just say proof, right? And we say, you know, getting a proof of this is impossible. Actually, it's a valid case because we're saying, like, given given some proof, like it doesn't know that we haven't we haven't deconstructed it and said like the only possible implementation is raffle, so therefore it's impossible. We're saying like, you've got a proof, like, so it's it's yeah. I have no idea what that means. No, because it's controlled. Yeah, I, I was going to, I was going to, because that would be the flaw. I mean, <laughs> so I was just wondering if you had allowed, if it fallaciously allowed that. Yeah. Wait, no, no, that's a okay. partial. Well, Double well, negation? Well, if you have, if you have a negative proof, then if you have void, so you can prove anything. The other way around, you can't. Um, yeah, no, you're right. I think, I mean, I would have to look it up. Okay. <laughs> but but I just, if you have, if you have a void, you Yes. <laughs> yep. So um, uh, adding one to a number is not idempotent, right? Like adding it twice is not the same as adding it once. Because it's plus two versus plus one. So how will we do this one? Pattern match. <laughs> and so now we have to do the same thing. We have to say that raffle is impossible, right? Because zero plus two, which is two, is not equal to one, right? Actually, we'll get we'll get Idris to tell us that. One is not zero, and that's impossible, right? Okay. Um, how do we do this one? So we can't do that. Like we can't just do raffle because it's trying to create some sort of infinite. It's trying to unify with itself, and it's because it's because uh, it's got a k in there. It can't do that. You have to show that if you did have a proof, that the induction would make it void. Exactly. So. So this is what we're trying to prove, which obviously doesn't make sense, right? Three plus n 
oh, 3 plus k is not equal to 2 plus k, right? Like, it's obviously weird. Um, so if we do the same thing like we did before, the induction stuff, so we say let induction equals suck, there you go. Uh, given, hang on, do we need to pass in that proof? What do we pass there? Tell me it, yeah. Um, is that right? Can we just put in proof here? That probably won't be the right type, right? Yeah. Do you have to say proof for this means proof for the thing you want to Yeah. How do you do that? That's a great question. I can't remember how to do this one. Yeah, and hockey's, un hockey's unhelping me today. Um, exactly. Oh, let's do that. Let's just uh, search for type. Uh, so we've got an S of K equals, no, what do we have? S of k. No, no, that does work. K equals k. There we go, yeah. Oh, there you go. We found the function I needed. So what this is, so what we just did, so if we just, if you look down the bottom, um, so we've got this proof that So we have, we have this proof, PRF, right, that S of S of S of K equals S of S of K. So K plus 2 equals K plus 3, which is obviously wrong. Um, but we need to basically unwrap it one level because we have to prove, like, because we're doing induction, we need to go up one level, right? So we need to, um, although this, is, uh, this looks strange, but um, what we're trying to prove is that S of S of K, K plus 2 equals K plus 1. So we need to go down one level. We need to unwrap the S's one level. So you can pass it to the inductive. So we can pass it to the inductive one, right? Recur. Yeah, so we need, to, like, we need to keep going up, right? So we need to do the one, K, we need to, we've got S of K, we're trying to prove. We need to prove K. So we need to unwrap our proof one level and then do the inductive case. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we've un we've <laughs> we've got an N. We've unwrapped it. So we've got successor of K. So that's the the inner one here. The S of S. So this S of K is the N that we got. And on that side, S of S of K, that's the, the S, the last, the, the, the one in brackets is the one that, that we just, is the N that we're, that we're trying to prove at the moment. Um, that we've split up and then got an S of K. So we know that it's an S of K. We, don't, we know it's not a zero. We know it's an S of K. So that's why it's in there. Um, and so what we're trying to prove is that we're not trying to prove that there's three. We're trying to prove for the case below it. We're trying to prove for K. So we've got to unwrap at one level. And so what we can do is Idris has got a type search built in. It's kind of like Google, but built into, into the REPL. Uh, if you look over here, I think it's just search, is it? So we can say that given, given that we know that S of n equals S of n, then we should be able to prove that n equals n, right? Does that make sense? n plus 1 equals n plus 1. Obviously, n must be the same thing. So then that will give us a function. It's built into the, into the standard library. It's called suck injective. And so you give it, you give it the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and you get a proof. Oh, sorry. And then you also give it the proof that that those are actually equal, and you get another proof, saying that the numbers below it are equal as well. Make sense? So if we just, so I've already got a proof that uh, I've already got 
PRF, which is a proof that the current one, the current number is equal. So if we do suck injective, uh, k and k, oh, was it s of s of k equals s of k that we're trying to prove? There we go. Does it make sense to everyone? They we've unwrapped it one level. No. So, so do you get do you get that we're doing induction, right? Um, and we need to prove like so. So the inductive case means that we have to provide a proof that uh, that something is, it's a weird proof, like it's something that's not true. But we ha already have a proof that something's not true. We just need to unwrap at one level, prove that the number below it is also not true, and we'll just keep going up until we get to the base case, and we'll prove obviously it's completely ridiculous. Does it make sense? And so suck injective is a way of unwrapping that proof that we already have one level down, and then like going using the induction to prove that something's wrong. So suck injective is just able to unwrap at one level. Unwrap a proof that we already have one level. So if we had, if we were trying to prove that 0 plus 3 equals 0 plus 3, on both sides, would we have one less pattern match on the first Uh, you mean the S and S of K? We've got too many? Or we don't have enough? Oh, right, right, right. Like if we actually had like a, like a specific number. Yeah. yeah, we could do suck injective that uh, 4 equals 4, uh, like 4 and 4, and we give it raffle, and then we get a proof that 3 equals 3. Does that make sense? You should be able to figure it out. Yeah, you should be able to figure it out. Yeah, I don't think those are required, but yeah. Uh, so, well, so so they are required, but in the def if if we change the definition of suck injective, I think we can make those implicit parameters, and therefore we wouldn't have to pass them in explicitly. Oh. It would be able to figure it out. Yeah, because because we already have a proof. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? The underscore? Yeah. Underscore just means if uh, if Idris can infer the values, then use it. And Idris can infer the values because if you look at the thing that we have to pass to, we have to pass an equality. And so, see how left and right are in that equality? Yeah. So we've got we've got left and right. And so Idris can figure out what these are, the, like, Idris can figure out what these are because we already pass it in here, in the type. Uh, it uses, uh, it unifies, so, yeah, it unifies left and right with what it already has and then just chucks it in. In what cases would you ever want to pass in left and right then? Like, why don't you just always? Just, I don't know, you can use underscore. Okay. Anyone still lost by this? We're good. Can we use that sort of thing? Can I pass it? What about it? Um, can you use that? Uh, yes, you can now. As of one of the, if you've got a later version, depends on what version you got. Yeah. I'm just curious if you can use tactics here, or is it? Yes. Yeah, let's use tactics. No, that's not. Okay, so we need to. So we have a proof that, hang on, is this loaded? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, oh, there you go. Don't worry, we don't even need that inductive case, do we? No, we've already proven that something's void, right? We've already got a value of void. So we don't even need to do induction. Is it possible Well, I mean, we are doing induction, but we're like, we don't even have to, like, we don't have to rewrite what, it, what we're trying to prove. We already are trying to prove void. So we've got something that's void. We've gone all the way down the base case and we're like, here's something that's void, this is impossible. And so then we just return that up. So we don't even have to use, like, I mean, we are using induction because we've got the suck, not identical and using k, so we're doing one less. But we're just proving void, we just pass that up. Oh, because there is no after 
Exactly. We're not rewriting any equality and saying that this thing is, is, is void. Like, yeah. we, just, we just have to return a void, which we already have. Exactly, exactly. So this is where we do the rewrite. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So then, after you've done the tag trace, is that okay to take the tag in here? Can you have it just give you the term? So like, if the trade-off is between readability and I would like, I'd like that. I don't know if there is a case. I don't. I would like that. Because it's like that should be possible, right? I think so. Yeah. Well, sometimes. Sometimes, like uh, sometimes you can use proof search to get to it, and then like what Idris will do is actually say, whenever you go to compile this, do a proof search. And so if you compile with different versions of Idris, you actually get different answers. Um, it, doesn't just well, doesn't with the it doesn't actually just it doesn't actually just give you a value to put in there. Like so you can do things that are more uh, like it's not like a macro that will just generate some code and shove it in there. It's yeah. okay, when I go to type check, I'll figure it out. And you can also do things like modify the data type and have the same tactic just work. You wouldn't be able to do that with it's, it's, it's doing it at com compilation time. You, you don't just have a term that you can just tuck in there all the time. They're a little bit more advanced than that. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, in the, uh, in the bytecode. IBC, yeah. It must be in there. I, I, I don't know for sure, but I mean, that's the only place that makes sense to me. So if you do it in Idris, Have it redo it. You'd have to do some sort of metaprogramming thing. Okay. Not on the not on the moment, no. Okay. Um, sorry. Yeah. So if you have this ability, then you can change the data type and your tactics will still like run, you know, at compile time. Is that does that commonly work out? Or is it would you say that it's more likely it works that out. you change the data type and it breaks it? More likely, yeah, more, yeah, no, it's much more likely to break things, yeah. No, I mean, I'm saying in like the rare case, like a an, uh, uh, a, a, the tactic language is more expressive than what an interest term would be. Like if you just rename the instructor, the tactics wouldn't need to change at all. Right. Be like actually when yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's good. That's a good example. Yeah. So renaming the re renaming the constructor, for example, is a is a, is a good one. So um, tactics then are, are sort of polymorphic in a sense that they cross cutting way. Um, like I mean, they they run they run over code, so right, exactly. they're not cut like they're not. Code itself, I guess. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a meta language. It's a meta language, exactly. That's exactly. Yeah. So I guess I guess the question would be: Is there um, I mean, is there a way to to quantify and assert like what specific things have been polymorphic over in, in sort of a, a can, type system, a meta type level? You can make new tactics. You can. Out of old ones with composition. Mm -hmm. I think there's a way to do that. In yeah. Those are all still made with Idris code and type check. So the tactics aren't just allowed to do whatever the hell they want. They still have to be sound. Right. So. Yeah. Very interesting form of, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. So uh, we've, got, we've got one more last example before I want to get onto something uh, a little bit cooler. Um, let's say we've got a function that's both idempotent and an involution. Can anyone think of an example function that satisfies that property? Identity what else? Something where you do it twice, it goes back and it two more times. No. Multiplying a negative one? No. Something no idea. A constant. Something that has no, not even that. No. Because then zero? the constant just what goes back. Again? What's that? What involution is, a, is uh, doing something twice is the same as doing it not at all. And um, idempotent is doing it twice the same as doing it once. Identity, identity, identity right? Like there, it's it's a trick question. Yes, <laughs> identity is the only function that can do this. Um, and like we can all just say that, but like let's we should actually prove that. Um, so yeah, this is what we're going to prove. We're going to prove that if we have an idempotent function f of a. So we're given like a, like a, we were saying for all a, we we're saying like uh, uh, for all f, like if, if, if we know that this function is idempotent and we know it's an involution, then f of a is a. Like that's the only way to, that's the only function that it can be. That make sense? Yeah. 
Anyone lost by that definition? Anyone want to guess how we can get there? <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there's no ref or leave. We're, we're going to use tactics for this because it's a bit easier to see how we can get there. Um, like tactics here is just going to be the like if we just jump in and just start proving it, it'll uh, jump out at us what the solution is. What's that? Yeah, so let No. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're getting there. So we know that f of f of a equals f of a, right? So, and we're trying to prove that f of a equals a. So what we can... That didn't work. Oh, wait, it did. It did. It gave us f of f of a, right? Equals a. So now we know that. Now what can we do? Right. So now we know f of f of a equals f of a, or we could have written that uh, we could have written sim, which is a bit nicer because we could just say a equals a. It's a bit more clear. Now what do we do? Trivial first. Then what? Yes. Chuck it in. There we go. We've just proven that something that's identipotent and an involution is identity. That's pretty cool, right? It's so hard to read the proof after because we don't have that. Right, you don't have, exactly. That's why people don't like tactics. Stuff. Exactly. That's why it feels like it is spitting out code because yeah. it's spitting out something. That's it's spitting, it's, it's yeah. just running what we just ran. Over, like, it's, it's doing exactly what we just did. I mean, when you did it interactively, it's like, oh, look, that's yep. into that. that you know, I exactly. And so Idris can redo it, but yeah. yeah. No. Like, that, mm, that, that, would, that would be cool. Yeah, it would be because I, I can read that. And it's like if I don't see that transformation happening, how am I supposed to know that's right? Because I'm just trusting the compiler. Yeah. All right. We've got about 23 minutes to do the trickiest one. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, load up bf .idris. I'm going to call this language bf. You might know it by another name. So uh, what we're actually doing is creating a data type that's indexed by a character. So to construct this, we have to give it a character. And there's only a couple of characters that we can construct it with, right? Make sense for everyone? You can't just do any char character. It has to be this limited subset of characters that we've defined right here. So we can only create um, a value of that, of the BF type, if we, if we know that the character's in there. Does it make sense? Now you can ignore all of this stuff. It's awful stuff as well. Don't read that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Below literals. Is everyone there? Everyone following? So we're going to create a data type. Um, where we've got a list of A's. Um, like the data type's going to be indexed by a list of A's. And what we're going to do is make a proof um, that this data type, um, like we're, going to be, we're going to go through everything in this list of A's and then prove that, uh, prove that uh, we have um, Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That should probably be a list of char, right? Anyway, so we're going to make a, a, a witness that everything in our uh, list of, I think that should be a list of char. Anything, everything in our list of char. Um, you won't be able to load this, but we're going to prove that everything in our list of chars um, uh, has the uh, has the BF type exactly. So if we get a if we get an empty list of chars, right? 
then we can prove that every, is that right? I'm just going to comment that out for a second so I can, I can know when I'm going the right direction. So nil is the case where like we don't have any characters, so we're just gonna we just we know that uh, we can cr we can construct this. So we can say that yes, the list the empty list of chars uh, is valid. Yes. So if we get a BF of of character. and we get a list of more characters, then we can prove that every It can be for our arbitrary, we could generalize this a lot more, and there is actually something built into the standard library that does generalize this, but I just wanted to show people how to do this. So what we're saying is that given that we have a BF of C, so we've got some character that's, uh, that's in our uh, that's in our algebra of things, um, we can show that. Actually, we don't even need we don't even need to index that. I don't think. I think we can just do. We don't even need this in the type. Exactly. Oh wait, no, we do need it in the type because we need to we need to prove it for. Yeah, we need to. There we go, yeah. Because we can only yeah we can only construct this. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're putting we're putting uh, this string into a type, right? We're splitting this string into a list of characters. We're putting it into types, so we've got an every of a list of characters. So the, we've got a value at the type. We've got a list of characters at the type. So we can only construct this if um, if we can show that there's a BF for everything in the in that character list. So for every character, we have to be able to show that that character has a BF. Does that make sense? And if, it if it doesn't, it won't compile. Oh, OK. okay. So what Idris has is a special keyword called auto, which will just say, try and figure out a way to construct a value of this type. So given a string s, try and construct uh, one of these every things for that s. So unpack just generate just create takes a string and generates a list of characters. And so we need to create an every for every we need to show that there's a bf for everything in that in that list of characters. So given a string split it up into a list of characters, go through and find a bf for every one of them. Auto will just whenever you apply that function will just try and find a solution to try and create a bf for every one of those characters. If it can't it will just not compile. That's that's just to make it auto, like just to like we're not going to use it, or are we? We might be, yeah, we we'll use it. Um, it's just the proof that everything in the all the list of every character in that list has a BF. Okay, so it's just say I'm going to automatically make this proof and I'll call it. Exactly, it's just it's just a name. Yes, yeah. So auto p p will be a proof that everything in that string has it. Uh, can we can create a BF? Does that make sense? Yeah, the curly braces in the signature just hear something and giving a type two. Uh, uh, the curly braces means that it's implicit, so Idris will just um, combine with auto. will just figure it out. Okay. It'll just look up, try it, like so. You don't have to give it anything. It'll just look it up. Yeah, it means you can figure it out based on the types of other stuff you've got. Yeah, you know how I was pressing Control A before to do a proof search. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it's going to do and put the result into into a value. No, that I/O type is just going to. We're not going. We can't evaluate this. You will be able to in a minute, but you can't evaluate this in like Emacs or anything like that. It's it's like it, especially since it says partial. If you see partial anywhere, you can't put that. Like you can't. Idris won't be able to reduce that anything to any. You won't be able to use that in a type. Okay. So 
if we try and implement this function, so what we want to do is take a string, and for, we want, we're going to get a BF for everything in that string, and we need to do some I.O. So we're going to like actually execute a program based on a string literal. Assuming that we have proof that it, everything in it is a BF. So we've got an S, which is a string, which we don't need to care about. What we need to care about is actually the proof that everything in that string is a BF. So uh, what do we have up here? I'm just trying to figure out what we're meant to call. So we need to make a So we need to create a tape of integers, which we can just do as I think empty tape, empty. Okay, and so now we've got one last thing we need to. Cr so we've got this proof that everything in this string has a BF. So now we need to uh, create some instructions from that tape. Um, and so that should be pretty easy, I think. Um, So we're going to take a, an every thing and create a, a tape of instructions from our algebra. Yes. Uh, so. So this will be repeat nothing. So a tape is an infinite stream. And if we have an empty, uh, if we have an empty, if, we, if our program is just empty, then we just create an infinite tape of nothings. And so our program will just finish. Um, and here we can just use recursion to say that uh, So the tape has, so that's the left-hand side, center, and the right-hand side. And we can say, we can make a tape. <coughs> where we just shift it, we're just putting uh, the current, we just keep shifting the tape left. Oh, sorry, shaped, uh, tape to the right. And we need to do one thing, which is that because the, the evaluation doesn't actually care about what type of uh, character the, the BF algebra is indexed by, we just need to put, uh, we need to just do something like an existential, a sigma type in, in dependent types, and say that, put a hole in there and say that, figure it out. So given, given that we have a BF of a character, then we need to say, um, we need to put the character on the left-hand side of our sigma type and the BF on the right-hand side. And so we just need to put an underscore to say, figure out what that, what that should be. And uh, we'll get an actual instruction. So what we're doing is just wrapping up the fact that. Uh, so you can put C where the underscore goes, would that be right? No, because C, C is the character, uh, it's, the, it's the current position of the next tape. So we're shifting it right. Does this make sense to everyone that we're like, 
we've got a BF of, of some character and we're just doing underscore and then the two stars just means like we don't care about what character that is. It's just an existential. Make sense? Anyway, we should be able to do uh, There we go. So if we, so that two instructions thing just takes uh, evidence that everything that we have has a BF. Every character is a BF. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Do you have a Okay. <laughs> so, so every has uh, every carries evidence that everything in our uh, list of characters has a BF. And so then we go through and we create instructions. Instructions are just existentially wrapped. Uh, uh, it's just this, but existentially wrapped. And we just go through and we make a tape out of that. So it's an infinite tape, but we just load up that list of characters into that tape. And then we can execute it. And we execute it with the BF prime function, which does some IO stuff. And now what we can do is write BF of something. And that'll compile to an IO thing. And so. You don't need to do. Yeah, it's just, it's IO. Right, but we're going to. And that's a program as well. Because that creates the, that, that converts into this case, the empty case, right? So we've got an empty program and an empty tape. And what we can do, what's going to happen if we do this? We, don't, we can't create a BF, like Idris won't be able to find a BF for, for A. And so it can't solve that goal. So the auto keyword was not able to, to resolve to something and find a proof that we have a BF of that. But if we do that, that should hopefully print something. Um, yeah, so what we've done is uh, created a string literal that only accepts a subset of characters and then converts into an algebra. We wrap the algebra up a little bit and then pass it off to something that can actually execute that algebra. So what, we done is, what we've done is uh, made like a string literal that can go into IO actions. And so we just made a BF interpreter. Does anyone? Can we run it? You should run it, because I can't run it. I'm on a Chromebook that doesn't have FFI or anything like that, so I can't run it. But I'd like to see someone else run it, because I haven't done it. I have no idea if it's going to work. <laughs> so what, what you, to run it from the repo, you can type in uh, Yes, I will. I'll do that. And so you can, you should be able to run. Mine's not supported, but if you can do that, that'd be awesome. Was anyone able to follow along enough to do that? Or you could actually get an executable by doing Idris. And then that should work as well. And you can actually, it'll just generate an executable that you can run. Yeah. Well, let me know if anyone actually gets that to compile. I'll push up the code. I'd like to see, I'd like to see if any of my programs actually work. Um, I've proven it correct, but I haven't run it, so. <laughs> what do you do if you want to read in your BF program? So, uh, yeah, that's a really good question. So uh, there's a type called DEC. And we can like give it a, a, a proposition. Uh, yeah. And so then we can like, if we have like p of some, like if we if we can show that p. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So we basically, just go through the string, try and create a BF for everything in that string, try and create an every for that type, and you've got a decidable instance for everything in that type. So that, like, either it's true or it's false. So you either got to prove that something's true or something is false, and then you can like dispatch on that. Yeah. Does what? Yes. Okay, that's a that's a problem. <laughs> so 
much for your proof. <laughs> you see all the partial keywords? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.